Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of the Cabinet Vision Guide. In this episode we're going to be starting a new series taking a look at rendering with Cabinet Vision. I like to start at the end and work backwards, so in the first video we're going to be taking a look at some of the rendering modes available and then continue the series looking at each mode individually exploring some of the settings we use to get a visually pleasing render. We're also going to be covering uh, other topics like lighting, material textures, finish types, importing models as they all play a part in creating a subjectively good render. So before we start I'm just going to go into the Nexus community and direct your attention over here. Um, just under Cabinet Vision and under Cabinet Vision Guide if you take a look at rendering we've actually got a guide that mirrors uh, some of the content that we're going to be making and what this does is it takes you through all the different render modes available and some of the settings that we use to get some of the nice renders and it also takes you through things like creating a rendered scene creating a walkthrough with Tor and also some details on some best practices when importing SketchUp models so to help me today to show off some of the different render modes um, I put together an example kitchen using my database and I've added some simple lighting uh, as well as a couple of camera angles just at the left and right side of the room so I'm going to start by just taking you through um, the job that I've got so if I just go back to plan view you'll see that we've got a again relatively simple kitchen and if I just go to 3d view you'll see that we've got a couple of camera views set up at the top and I'll just cycle through those so I've got one from the right hand side and then one from the left and I've also if I go into lights we can access our lighting schedule from here again we'll be doing a separate video showing you how we set up the lighting for each different render mode but as you can see I've got a few directional lights in the center of my room here one on the outside just shining through the window which is my main sort of light source at the back and then I've also got a sunlight in there as well so the first rendering mode that I'm going to show is an enhanced texture view and I like this rendering mode because it gives us a good idea of the space that's available and some of the colour schemes without us investing too much time in the render. It doesn't require us having any lighting set up but it does require us just having some nice textures applied to the floor, um, ceiling and the assemblies inside the room. So I'm going to enable this just by going up to render mode and entering texture mode and once I'm there what I'm going to do is I'm going to enhance this drawing but I'm going to take a look at the options first so I'm going to right click and just go to properties and for each different render mode we've got a, an options tab here so for CV render if I go to enhance I've got a couple of different options enabled I've got watch enhancements turn this one off and I'm going to turn on anti-aliasing as well I've got mine set at a conservative one at the moment um, but if I set that to 10 essentially what this is going to do is it's going to work its way through the image on screen and just start to crispen up um, some of the lines uh, that we see we'll see in a second so if I hit OK if I was to set that to 10 it's going to take a little bit longer to do but we'll end up with a, a crisper image so it just depends how much detail you want but from there all I need to do is click enhance and then cabinet vision starts doing its thing at the bottom you'll see that we've got a, a status bar and just a message on the left hand side telling us where the renders are and we've also got the stop button here if you want to stop the render at any point. Now the reason I like this render is it's again really simple to create, very easy to do and it lets us take a few different shots of the same room quite quickly and um, get those through to the drawings page and it can be quite effective if we combine this with a few different elevations as well which are again quick and simple to get through to the drawings page. So what we'll be able to see on screen is just some of the lines up at the top are starting to crispen up and what we're going to be left with is quite a nice effect at the end. So I'm going to speed up the video just for a minute uh, while this runs through. So now with my render finished I can send this through to the drawings page or maybe take a screenshot and again this one's really effective if we combine it with other renders and other drawings. So the next render mode that I'm going to show uh, requires the rendering multiplier. So up at the top here I'm just going to click on rendering and this one's uh, as easy to create um, it's one just hand drawn. So if I click on full hand drawn from here what this is going to do is just going to give us a render exactly what we see on screen and this is to give the hand drawn effect um, so quite simple, quite easy to set up and again with this one I can move through different cameras so if I just move on to my other camera across here 
and just go again you'll see that obviously with this style of render we're not worrying about lighting we're not even worried about textures and um, the only thing that we've got if we right click for a second and go to properties under the rendering tab we've got options here for setting a background image which obviously we've got outside now what we can do with this uh, type of hand-drawn image is if we just expand the options here we can actually output this to a file uh, and at that point we can choose a custom definition so I'm just going to cancel this if I go up to hand-drawn I've got two options I can either do a hand-drawn which we see on screen or I can save a hand-drawn and I'll just post up on screen now and show you what that type of image will look like so you see on this one I've output a higher definition and we get a nice image Okay, so the next rendering mode that I'm going to look at um, is a little bit more involved. With this rendering mode, we would need to worry about um, textures, lighting, um, and different camera angles. Uh, and that's because with this render mode, we're looking for a much more photorealistic render. And that is using the architectural render. So again, with this one, we've got the options to save the architectural render out to a larger resolution image if we want. We can do a full architectural where we see the render happen on screen. Or we can do what we call a preview architectural, which gives us a good idea of what our render is going to look like. So I'm just going to start off by going with a preview architectural. And what this does is it just gives me a quick image. And the idea being with this that we can preview some of the lighting effects that we've got set up. And some of the different finish types that go into making this render look nice before we go into our architectural and do a full architectural render. Now some of the different options we've got for this rendering mode, if I just go to properties and render, we can specify again uh, anti-aliasing levels. So if I turn this up to maximum, I'm gonna get a nice crisp image. I can also specify the quality of the light sampling and reflection details. But with this render, I can also put post-processing options on there, which I've got set up on mine. I can specify a background image which we can see outside and again I can output to a custom file type. So to render this image in full what I'm going to do is just come up to architectural up at the top and click on full architectural and the first thing CV does is it works out all the different light and effects for us, all the different shadows and then it works on the reflection detail and then it'll try and make the image as crisp as possible depending on what settings we've used. Now it'll typically take a couple of minutes um, for this type of render to complete um, but depending on what settings we've got um, you can also offload this to the CV render app which we're going to look at in a second and set this running just while you're using Cabinet Vision. And as you can see on screen <coughs> essentially what's happening is it's making multiple passes just to make the, the drawing the image as crisp as possible and take away any jagged lines that we see there. So I'm just going to speed this up a little bit. Now with our render finished, we can see some of the advantages that an architectural render brings us. Obviously this, this looks uh, a lot different to a, a to say a textured render um, in the fact that we've got different light and effects we can see up at the top here coming through and also different light and effects from the sunlight down here as well as some subtle reflection details and overall we just get a much sort of nicer visually pleasing render to look at. Now what we can do with this render before we send it through to the drawings page or, or take a screenshot is we can actually employ some post process options which I've got here so I'm just going to move these slides around you can see that our render we can do things like modify the different lighting effects and set things like temperature adjustment or whether we want to sharpen the image. So again we can play with this until it appeals to us uh, and we think it looks like what we class as a, a nice render. Obviously that's quite subjective. So for the next rendering modes um, we're going to take a look at something a little bit different and for that I'm going to move across into the CV rendering app. So with the rendering app open, I'm actually going to talk about the next two rendering modes together just because they're very similar in how we'd set them up uh, and the type of effect that they give. And that, if I go up to the rendering menu up here, is the real-time render and the tour render. 
At the moment we're looking at a real-time render. Uh, and the difference between this and something like an architectural render it, with real time is that essentially we've rendered in real time. So if we want to, we can do things like switch different camera views and still see the light and effects. But we can also do things like create a 3D walkthrough where we walk through a, a scene. And this is great for helping a customer get a, a real full understanding of the space that's available, um, how we've fitted the furniture in and what we're going to be doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to Tor and I'm going to do that just by going to render and going into tour mode and what this is going to do is just going to reload the job so with tour mode enabled uh, some of the advantages to this render mode is essentially we can create a full 3D walkthrough so if I just hit play up at the top here you'll see my render is now starting to give me a walkthrough and what I've done is just placed a couple of cameras uh, and created a walkthrough back in CV so when I enter the rendering app all I need to do is hit play and I can control things like the walking speed from down here so if I want to increase the speed here I can do but I can also affect some of the lighting so if I just turn this down up and as you can see this is happening live as we get our walkthrough I'm just going to stop that make myself sick obviously if we were doing a, a proper walkthrough we'd probably use more than just two different camera points but again we can look at that when we set up um, our tour video so hopefully you found this video beneficial, uh, maybe it's in a render mode that you'd like to start using. Um, again, in further videos we're going to, going to be covering each render mode um, separately and going into detail with that. Don't forget to give us a like uh, and subscribe. Uh, we're on Facebook, that's facebook.com slash thecabinetvisionguy and on Instagram as well, that's instagram.com slash thecabinetvisionguy. Uh, we'll try and get some renders on there as well <clears throat> to show you some of the different examples. Cheers.